All right, if you have your Bibles, will you turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 17? Now, we're going to begin reading in verse 38. Uh, I'll spare you all the Bible reading that I had planned, but let me just give you the background. In about 12 B.C., the Philistines came to Canaan. The problem now is Canaan's already been given by God to another nation. They come. A few years later, the Israelites come. After wandering in the wilderness, they come. Even then, when they're in the wilderness, the Philistines are already there. Now, God said, when you go into Canaan, drive everybody out. If you go in the battle and there's a battle and they don't leave, kill everything. You say, man, that don't sound like God. Well, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Amen. All the cattle, everything, nothing is... God did not want the influence of heathens messing with his chosen people. But when Israel gets into a promised land, they do not do what God said to do. And one of the nations they leave is Philistines. From that day even through the day, that nation is giving them a problem. But let's look at one incident in the Bible. There is a battle going on. Now this is Israel's first king, so we're probably looking at about 1,000 B.C. is when this battle took place. There is the Philistine army on one Heal Israelites' army on another one, and there's a valley in between. You know how sometimes uh, China will have an air show and the United States will have a show of power? They would march their soldiers out. The Bible called it a raid. And finally, a Philistine came out. Some Bible scholars say it was nine feet tall. But when you take the dimensions given in the Bible, he is 11 foot and 4 inches tall. Now when the Bible calls somebody a giant, it means a giant. And so, every day this giant comes out and challenges the people of Israel, curses the name of Jehovah. Every day this is going on. Nobody will go out to fight him. His challenge is send one man out to fight me and whoever wins the nation will serve the one that's defeated. Well, in the meantime, David, father sends him to the army. Now, David's about 16 year old. Sends him with some food and some encouragement. He has two older brothers that's in the Israelite army. When David gets there, here's his giant parading around, and David said, well, why don't y'all go out there and kill him? Here's his little 16-year-old boy, a little foot pitch fuzz on his face. Why don't you guys, why don't, what's going on here? How dare him do that? His brothers get upset with him. They're making him look, he's making them look bad. And they said, why aren't you back with those few sheep? You underline that few. Why aren't you back with these few sheep you're taking care of? So when we get to verse 38, David has made such a pitch on this thing that he's now fixing to go out and fight the giant, but Saul, the king, is trying to get him ready, trying to get him dressed for the occasion. Let's pick up in 38. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put on a helmet of brass upon his head, also, he, ar oh, he armed him with a coat of nails that is over his leg. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he arrayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of himself, and he took his staff in his hand, and he chose five smooth stones out of the brook and he put them in his shepherd's bag which he had even even his crib and he and his sling was in his hand and he drew nigh unto the Philistine and the Philistine came and drew nigh unto David 
and the man that bare his shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. And he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou would comest to me with a stave? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with sword and with spear and with shield, but I come to thee. I come to thee in the name of the Lord God of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou defy. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smoke thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of Philistines this day under the fowls of the air to the wild beasts of the earth and all the world, all the earth shall know there's a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth, not with a sword and the spear, for the battle is the Lord's. And He will give unto us our hand. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to David that David haste and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took hence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in the forehead that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell upon, him, upon the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in David's hand. Therefore David ran, stood upon the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of the sheave therefore, and slew him and cut off his head thereof. And when the Philistine saw their champion was dead, they, they fled, they run. It ended in verse 30, 54. David took the head of, of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. David got this big old head. He's carrying it around. He's just cut this guy's head off, carrying it around. Now, folks, every one of us, every one of you, you've got giants in your life. There's something that's, that's absolutely hard for you to overcome. There's something that troubles you. There's a challenge before you. And you don't seem to be able to have the strength to overcome it. It varies with every, everybody's got their own set of giants that they have to overcome. But I'm going to give you a prerequisite here. First of all, you need to identify your giant. Identify your job. What is it hindering you in life? It may not just be in your church life. It may be in other areas of your life. What is it that's hindering you, especially in the Lord's work? Here is an incentive God's given us. The Bible said in Hebrew, Therefore, since we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that is so easy entangle us and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Now this great cloud of witnesses is those saints of God that's gone on to, go to be with the Lord. Some were great men. Matter of fact, the book of Hebrews chapter 11 is a hall of faith, hall of fame of those great saints. But listen, some of those in that cloud of witnesses that's gone on are they fail miserably. Say, not everybody was a David. Not everybody was a Saul. Not everybody was a Paul. Some were just average, normal people. The most of them are people like us who struggle in life and who never had their name written in the, in the local newspaper, much less in the Bible. David had no problem identifying his giant. Uh, a guy that's 11 foot and 4 inches tall, you going to pick him out in a crowd. He had no problem. There's my giant, David thought in his heart. 
So Jesus identifies our main giant. Here's what he said in John 10.10. 10. The thief cometh not only to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that you might have life and you might have it to the fullest. He said, that's why I came. I came not only that you might have eternal life, but I came that you could have life to the fullest. You know in your heart what God wants you to be. You know in your heart you love God wants to save you. But there's an enemy. We call him the devil. Here Jesus called him a thief because he'll steal everything you've got. He'll steal your peace of mind. He'll steal the love that you should have for your fellow man. You see, if I uh, hold on to sin, I'm going to be defeated. Now the Bible talks about slothfulness. Normally you think about that as laziness, but in the Greek it's an interesting twist. Here's what it means. Slowing down while moving in the same direction. Slowing down while moving in the same direction. So here I am. I'm drifting along here. I'm hitting every church service there is. All of a sudden I'm going in the right direction, but I'm slowing down. I start with missing Wednesday night, slowing on down. Slowing on down. Still saying I'm loving the Lord. I do love the Lord. I'm still, but I'm slowing down, slowing down. And finally I quit Sunday night and I'm slowing down, slowing down. Don't listen. That is to let the enemy defeat you. That is to let the devil get the best of you. Many things slow us down in our Christian walk. We went, just went through this COVID uh, thing and it is uh, it has slowed us down. It has slowed us down. It's going to take some time. Time, and, but what we got to watch is Satan lying to us while we kind of have this downtime lying to us. And sometimes people don't encourage us the way they should. Make a middle note right now. Let's just stop a minute. In your mind, make a middle note of one giant you're fighting in your life. One giant. Now, once you have identified the giant, now you've got to identify yourself. Before I can kill a giant, I need a revelation from God of who I am, bro. Who am I to kill a giant? Well, who was David? What, what made this smart ass kid? Here he is, 16-year-old, walking up and down, looking at that giant, so I'm going to go out there and kill him. Man, wait till I get a hold of him. I'm going to go out there and kill him. Why in the world gave that young man that kind of confidence? If you go back to the next chapter, you'll find out what. Remember, Jesse had several boys. Samuel comes out on the instruction of God to anoint one of those boys as a king of Israel. He chooses David, the least, the most insignificant. Listen, David had been chosen to be king, and he had been anointed. Brother, when you chosen and you anointed, things begin to be different. Things begin to be big different with you when you realize God has anointed you. Listen, every one of you here that's born again, that knows the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, God has made you not only a king, God has not only anointed you with the Holy Spirit of God, but Revelation says God has made us priests and kings. He added one ingredient to what David had, you see. You see, when they, they might have said to David, David, are you crazy? Look how much bigger that giant is than you are. And David said, look how much smaller he is than God. Amen. David, they said, he's too big to hit. They said, are you kidding? He's too big to miss. <laughs> Huge guy. David had to, Now the Bible warns us about something though. Not to think of ourselves too highly. I read this interesting story about this proud mouse. The proud, the proud mouse, the uh, circus came to town. Everybody was making a big deal over the elephant. And the elephant was going to walk over the bridge. And the mouse walked over the bridge with it. <laughs> you you got to be got to be careful about things like that in our, in our Christian life. But most Christians don't go in that direction. I've never met many Christians that was in a proud sense. Most Christians, most Christians 
go in the other direction. That direction that says, oh, Lord, oh, me. Everybody can do it better than I can. Everybody teaches better than I can. Everybody sings better than I can. Everybody can do this. But listen, it don't matter what somebody else do. We got a job God called us to do. We don't judge ourselves by, by somebody else, you see. Then we have to identify who we are. Let me tell you who you are. I can tell you six things about yourself, or five things. You are a sinner saved by grace. Amen. Amen. No, that's too kind. That's too kind. You are a wretched sinner saved, saved by grace. That's all we can be. All we can be. We are wretched sinners saved by grace. We are the redeemed of God. God redeemed us on the cross. We are in the shadows of the rapture of the church. Now listen to me. I believe we are getting very, very, very close till the time when the eastern sky was split and Jesus will come back and those that are alive will be raptured up and the dead in Christ will, will go up first. But not only that, we have been employed and empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. When the Holy Spirit came upon David, he was with him the rest of his life. That's unique. Most people, prophets, when it came up on them, it would leave at certain times. Once they had prophesied what God told them. But when God gave you and I the Holy Spirit, when we got saved, when we got that anointing from the Holy Spirit of God and He came into our heart, it is forever. Paul said this, this is a marching orders. This is the sign that goes over the Christian life. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now the next thing let me tell you, you need to plug in to the power source. Don't try to be somebody you ain't. See, here's what David, when David's in the in our text, he's in the he's in the tent of Saul the king. And Saul's dressing him up. Man, he got him dressed in that armor. He was the prettiest looking thing you ever seen. Had that brass helmet on. I mean he would he had the king's rags on. And he was like a salmon in a tin can. Bouncing around. If he went out there that why that giant would have balled him up and made a made a baseball out of him. Hey, you know, some things, whatever will work for one person might not be, might not be your thing because everybody is unique. How did David get so good with a slingshot? He got good because he practiced every single day. Every single day. He had to protect those sheep. He told about how he killed a lion and killed, killed a bear. So you know God has a lot of people to help us. Ain't that wonderful? Matter of fact, there's 14 million babies. And most of them, well some of them the FBI can't find. But those, of, those others are willing, are willing to help you. They're willing to help you. These older folks like me, listen, we've been through the mill. We've been there, have we not? Miss Faye, have we been, have we been there and done that? We've been there and done that. And you can confine in us. Listen, it is our job to help you. That's why we're here. We've been through the mill. Uh, some of you older folks, uh, y'all even built fires here, didn't you? Haven't you ever told any coal or wood in here? All right, see, we've been here a long time. That don't mean we any smarter than y'all are. It may mean we've just been dumber longer. But anyway, we've been here for a long time, and it is our job, our job to help you and see that we do all we can for you. Not only that, but there's organizations. I get letters every day from conferences, uh, pastors' conference. We have it every Monday. I have comfort of uh, Sun School conferences, discipleship training conferences, brotherhood conferences. On and on we go. God is and the internet, man, that and the phone, man. I ask my phone all the time things. I don't know what her name is, but she's the smartest woman I ever met. She, she got the answer to everything. Hey, the the resources are here. Just latch on to them. The psalmist said, My help cometh from the Lord. Though many can help us, though that's out there to help us, the main thing comes from the Lord. Amen. Main thing. But now the second thing, or the third thing is this. Choose the right weapon. 
We already talked about how you like Simon and Ten Ten. He chose five stones. No, I didn't write. He chose five smooth stones. He could not have a rock with an edge on it. He would throw his throw him off. He could not have he could not have a square one maybe. It had to be smooth. He got it out of a brook and it was a smooth stone. He got five of them. He picked out just the right size and he put them in his uh, in his bag. There's five stones. I want you to consider. First of all, there's the stones of the past. When he looked back in his past, he remembered the lion. He killed the lion with his sling. He killed the bear with his sling. Interesting, he goes into detail about the lion. He said the lion had a kid toting him off. He's acting with his sling. Bam, he gets it. He grabs him by his whiskers and cuts his throat. You can see why a giant didn't check him up too much, can't you? He had been there. He had done that, you see. There's a stone to the past. The Bible says, remember the wonder He has done, His miracles and His judgment pronounced. But then there's a stone of prayer that you need to always have with you. Prayer is life. You're defeated before you ever get started. The psalmist said, Have mercy me on me, O Lord, for in you my soul taketh refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wing until the disaster has passed. Regardless of how talented and gifted we are, folks, we got to pray. Got to pray every day. But then there's the stone of priority. Our top priority should be the honor of God. Say it's what David said in 47, 46, and 47. He said, you're, you're, you're coming here to find the God of Israel. The, the honor of God's at stake, you see. So he put his priority in order. Then there's a stone of passion. You know, you need to be passionate about God, folks. Now listen to it. Y'all need to be passionate about God. Passionate about the church. Passionate about Sunday school and all the, all the things that we, that we promote here. Notice what the Bible said. When David started out and this giant gets up and he looks out, he's looking, he looks down, Lord in mercy, dark little old boy. And all he's got in his hand is a stick. <laughs> and he said, oh, my dog, you know what the giant thought? He thought the nation of Israel was trying to embarrass him. Even if he killed this little boy, they'd make fun of him. His, uh, even his own soldiers, his own army would say, ha oh, ha, boy, you're a big guy, ain't you? You killed that little boy. And he's mad about it. And this is what the Bible says. And the Bible says, David ran towards him. Man, he didn't wait for him to come. He ran to him. He was passionate about it. He had that, got that slingshot. Here it goes. That thing probably got up to 100 miles an hour. <laughs> there it went. There it went. God, by the hand of God. Amen. Hey, let's put credit where it belongs. Guided by the hand of God. Right where, right in between his armor, where there was in the helmet, right it sank into his skull. And he fell face down. Now why did David take five stones? He only used one. I mean he took five five stones, Brother Theo, for two reasons. Number one, he made allowance for human animals. He's got five shots now <laughs> instead of one. But there's another reason. This guy may have had some kin folks that needed, that needed something to do. <laughs> you see. But he killed him. Now after he kills him, now time, sometimes you got to do things for right then, right then. If you're lost, you got to get saved today. Right now, right now. What did David do? He ran over and got on him. And I saw that. I thought of a rooster we used to have. He'd kill other roosters and he'd stand up on top of them. <laughs> so then, here this David is, a little bitty winky boy. And he takes out the sword and he, he probably had to make two or three licks to get his head off. Sometimes the Lord's work gets a little messy. You see. Gets a little messy. But there's some things you cannot put off. If David had lollygagged around, that rascal would have come too, probably. 
And even if he was out of his mind, he could have hurt some folks. But David took his head. Philistines, what they do? They saw it and they ran. Well, that don't make no sense. Here's one big guy, but he's a whole army of thousands of men. And when one guy goes down, they all run. You know what the problem was? They had too much confidence in one person. Amen. Now, you cannot put too much confidence. You ought to love your fellow man, bless your fellow man, but listen, all confidence needs to be in God. Amen. In God. I've known churches when preachers would leave, they seem to fall all to pieces. I tell you, when I leave here, y'all better not even miss me. Not a bit. I'm a leaf that's blown by the wind. That's the way you've got to dress every, every minute. So, here we are today. you got a giant in your life. I know you. So how do you know that? Preacher? I know because you're a human being. you got a giant in your life. Some of you are lost. You need to be saved. You need to be born. Boy, that is a giant. Uh, that giant will lead you into hell. That giant will ruin your life. That giant will mess everything God has planned for you. Mess it up. But let me tell you something. Here's what I want you to do. If you take that giant home with you, that rascal, he is going to mess with you. and He's going to make you miserable. But here's what I want you to do. When we start the invitation, as we start the invitation now, here's what I want you to do. While we're singing this invitation, buddy, you and Miss Diane, come, we're going to come start the invitation. I want to sing an invitation. I want you to make up your mind right now. I'm going to kill that giant. I want you to bring that rascal right up here and pray and pray and pray and God will do away with that giant in your mind. Dear Lord God, how we praise you and how we thank you. Lord, thank you for these examples in your word. Though we may not ever stand and do battle in the sense David did, Yet we do every day with principalities and power and spiritual warfare. Lord, now we pray if there's anyone here today that's lost, that today they'll be saved. If there's anyone here that's out of God's will and backslid, I pray today, God, they'd come and rededicate their life to you and kill those giants in their life. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this service. Bless it because, Lord, you want it to be blessed. You died on the cross so it could be blessed. Lord, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up and bless the